Year 2236. Space exploration is flourishing, and astronauts are the most respected professionals in the solar system. Yet despite all technical advances, no sign of extraterrestrial life has been observed. Or rather, wasn't until two years ago. The GSA, Global Space Agency, registered a repeating signal like no other. It was coming from a galaxy billions of light years away and moving. The decision was made to construct a one-of-a-kind spaceship, exceeding the speed of light, to explore the signal. Today, it's finally ready and has been given a fitting name – Hope. But there's a problem. To reach its full speed, it has to be piloted manually. And these four individuals are now going on board the ship for the most important mission in history. Perhaps never to come back. The astronauts are in their seats. Engines are starting. Ground control begins the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The Hope starts off the ground, borne by its rocket carrier. The sky is overcast, but that's only for the first few seconds. And here we are, in the clear blue above the clouds. Our ship is leaving the atmosphere now, getting ready for the first of its many ordeals – the space debris. Even today, there's still too much of it floating in orbit. The pilots are skilled, though, so there's almost no chance… Oh no! Look at that huge chunk of metal coming straight at them! Who Barely made it! Now that we're through, the hope is on its own, and its deep space engines turn on. The first solid object on our way is, of course, the Moon. Located 239,000 miles away, it's the Earth's only satellite and its closest celestial body. To get here by airplane, you'd need 17 full days and a lot more air to fly with. Luckily, we're not on a plane. Gaining more speed, the astronauts reach Mars, the fourth planet from the Sun. It's home to the tallest mountain in the solar system. Olympus Mons. It's so huge that it's visible even from space. Leaving the red planet behind, the Hope approaches the second obstacle, the asteroid belt. Oop, careful now! It's nimble, so it easily dodges the space rocks. Look! See that huge thing over there? It's not a planet, it's Ceres, the largest near-Earth asteroid. It's over 600 miles in diameter, more than twice the length of the Grand Canyon. Oh shucks, the pilots must have been lost in admiration at the giant. Smaller asteroids are closing in on them. They're almost hit. Oof! Oh, near miss. They're now safely out of the belt and accelerating again. Next stop is Jupiter, the largest planet of our system, a gas giant. Its diameter is about 89,000 miles, which makes it more than 11 times bigger than Earth. Look at that enormous swirl on its surface. See? That's a hurricane that's been going on for centuries, and it alone is twice the size of our home planet. Now, our pilots whir a bit to the side and reach out of Saturn's famous rings. They're made of ice and stone and span as wide as the moon is from the Earth. Woo! What was that, a comet? Whoa, close call! Those tailed things are essentially huge chunks of ice hurtling through space, and one of them has flown inches from our hero spacecraft. Reaching sub-light speed, the ship rolls past the orbit of two other planets, now too far and unseen, to the first dwarf planet of the solar system, Pluto. Not far away you can see Charon, the largest of its five moons. It's so big that it doesn't only orbit around Pluto, but makes it kind of dance around Charon too. Almost at the speed of light now, the spacecraft races straight into the Kuiper Belt, the second asteroid belt on its way out of the system. Chunks of ice float past, and the astronauts have to be very careful veering among them. Careful! One of the rogue asteroids has scraped the ship. At such speed, a more serious impact could have been devastating. But even a scrape like this is pretty bad. They drop the speed to do some repairs, while the two pilots are gingerly leading the Hope out of the belt. But what's that huge thing blocking the view? 
Oh, it's Eris, another dwarf planet the size of Pluto, which means we're safely outside and will soon be approaching the limits of the solar system. Just one last obstacle on the way, the Oort cloud. Quiet now. The moment has finally come. The cloud is too far away to reach it even at the speed of light. It will take a year at best. So the hope is preparing its state-of-the-art skip drive. Ready? Now! In the blink of an eye, the hope is right at the inner limits of the Oort cloud, the last asteroid belt there is in the solar system. It's not as hazardous as the previous two, because asteroids are much farther apart, but skipping through them is still not an option. So the ship is carefully making its way among the icy rocks. Shoot, another comet! And another one! Two comets at a time, both somehow attracted to the spacecraft! No! Huh? They're… alive? Oh, I see. The comets collided with each other just behind the Hope, and the blast simply pushed it forward. Boy, you guys had me worried, you know? But now we're finally out of the boundaries of the solar system. The greater space begins, and it's safe to skip again. The Hope jumps several light years further ahead, and we're now looking at the Sun's closest star neighbor, the Proxima Centauri and its two big brothers, Alpha Centauri A and B. It's still unknown if there's any life on the planets of this star system. The skip drive is getting blue again, time for some action. Now it's making a series of jumps, each taking the hope several thousand light years further into the cosmos. The scale is getting broader. And now we're looking at the Milky Way galaxy in all its glory, while still being within it. Isn't it beautiful? But there's no time to waste. With each skip, we're making bigger distance still. And wait, what's wrong? Why did we stop? Is that? Yes! We're now being witnesses to the demise of a star. That stream of light is its energy, and the bright disk that attracts it is called the accretion disk, the ring of matter and energy swirling around a supermassive black hole. The astronauts are lucky to have stopped in time, otherwise they would have been spaghettified. Adjusting the course, setting the skip drive, and another series of interstellar jumps takes the hope out of the Milky Way and into the neighboring galaxy, Andromeda. And here we're at a safe distance, watching the incredible, the birth of a galaxy cluster. Thousands of light years away, but big enough to be clearly visible from here. Hundreds upon hundreds of galaxies are being born right now. And at the center of it all is another black hole. It's the core of a new cluster, weakened and thus helping stars to appear. And now, finally, the skip drive is ready to take the astronauts to their point of destination, the mysterious signal. They've been receiving it ever since leaving the Earth, and it's growing stronger with each skip. Now they expect it to be even clearer, because the next jump will take them a billion light years ahead. We're now in a weird place. There are several stars, all circling around a small black hole, and each having at least a couple of planets orbiting them. Look, one of the stars got too close, and a fountain of light spurted toward the black hole. But then the star ripped itself free and continued its slow movement. Here, the signal is stronger, but not as strong as expected by far. It's moved further, much further. There's no choice but to skip again, and who knows where to. It's dark and quiet. Too much so, in fact. Complete darkness and deafening silence. And then… The wave of light engulfs the spacecraft, and in the glow, they see it with incredulous eyes. They're at the edge of everything. The edge of the universe as we know it. There's a wall of dancing light, not unlike the northern lights on Earth, but all shades of red and yellow instead of green. And it's rapidly moving away, carrying with it the signal, which has become very strong all of a sudden. All this time, it was a chase after the end of all that is. And now, there's no choice but to pursue the goal until the very end. 
the crew braces themselves and skip there, outside our universe. <laughs>